Greetings, First English family and friends. Welcome to Tuesday. Uh, another cloudy day out there and a little bit of snow flurries going down and uh, oh, quite breezy out there. Yeah, we got a little ribbon tied to our, uh, our uh, bird feeder out there and it's, yeah, blowing the breeze there. <laughs> so, uh, check in time. How are you all doing? Um, continue to pray that uh, you guys are all safe and healthy and well. Leave a question or a comment below if you have one. I do have some coffee here. Still working on that Turkey Trot uh, coffee from Patina, uh, Collectivo Coffee. Down at, it's available that uh, was available down at uh, Patina Coffee House. I don't know if they have it anymore, but uh, they might have some Christmas blends out there. So, anyway, cheers, Church. So our devotion today again comes from our hope and expectation Advent and Christmas devotionals. And again, these are available at First English in the bin under the portico at the, par at the parking lot there. So you can pick one of these up. Also, also uh, Christ in Our Home and Word and Season and, and the Spark Family um, magazine there is there too. So you can stop by and pick up one of everything. Um, and uh, the picture today is, I'll show you that, the father, the father hugging his children there. And scripture reading is, oh, uh, who this is written by? I've got to tell you that, too. Um, this is written by Annabel Markey. She's pastor at, uh, where is she? At Community Lutheran Church in Sterling, Virginia. And the uh, scripture reading is Isaiah 40, verses 1 and 2. Comfort, O oh, comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to her that she has served her term, that her penalty is paid, that she has received from the Lord's hand a double for all her sins. And the uh, to ponder section of that is a verse from uh, the hymn, Comfort, Comfort Now My People, number uh, 256 in our ELW, and this is verse one. Comfort, comfort now my people, tell of peace, so says our God. Comfort those who sit in darkness, mourning under sorrow's load. To God's people now proclaim that God's pardon waits for them. Tell them that their war is over. God will reign in peace forever. And the devotion is titled, uh, What Becomes of the Brokenhearted, which is another song, but uh, uh, not in the hymnal. It's one of those. Motown, 50s, 60s, what become to the brokenhearted? I couldn't tell you who, who sang that. My, my Jess probably could. Um, so if you watch this, just put that in the comments who sang this. What becomes of the brokenhearted? And I don't know the rest of the words. Anyway, what becomes of the brokenhearted? Pastor Annabel writes, God's people Israel had been in exile living in a foreign land, yearning for a home and for the life they had known. But God was not done with them. The Lord announces to all heaven and earth that the time of sadness is over. God remains their God and will bind up their wounds. They may have sought after idols and failed to uphold their part of the covenant, but God will never revoke God's promises. The faithful one will reestablish them. We have all made mistakes and sinned. We've ruptured relationships with others, with creation, and with God. We participated by sins of commission or omission in the systemic isms of our time, racism, ageism, consumerism, and so on. We have much to confess and repent of, We've caused and received heartache that through our own egos, I'm sorry, we've caused and received heartache through our own egos and brokenness. Still, the Most High calls out for people. St sorry, <laughs> let me try that again. Still, the Most High calls out for comfort for all the people of God. God speaks tenderly to us, proclaiming that our time of heartache and exile shall not last forever. Nothing and no one can
and banish us from God's abundant love and grace. We have a place as God's beloved people today and forever. Some really powerful words from Pastor Annabelle Markey that uh, that I need to hear too. That, uh, you know, just because I'm a pastor doesn't mean I'm perfect. Just, again, ask my wife. Um, we have much to confess and repent of. We've caused sin, caused and received heartache through our own egos and brokenness. And then there's that promise, right? Nothing and no one, not even ourselves, can banish us from God's abundant love and grace. We have a place as God's beloved people today and forever. And that is good news. Be of strong heart and good courage this day, dear church. Keep yourself safe and healthy and well. Wash your hands, wear your mask, practice physical distancing in public, and uh, stay home as much as possible. Because these are ways we slow the spread of the pandemic. We help out our nurses and doctors and hospitals, and uh, we show love to our neighbor and share the light of Christ. Uh, let's pray. God of faithfulness, even in our suffering and heartache, you bring us tender comfort. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Thanks for watching. Blessings upon you. Peace.